When it comes to synaptic transmission, one of the first things that people seem to get a little bit confused about is what actually counts as the synapse, with a lot of people thinking that the synaptic gap or cleft is the synapse. Actually, that is not true. The synapse is the whole thing here. So we've got the presynaptic neuron here, uh, specifically the axon of the presynaptic neuron. And over here, we have the postsynaptic neuron, specifically a dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron. And then the final part of the synapse is this section here, which of course is the synaptic gap, which is also known as a synaptic cleft. The process of synaptic transmission works as so. An electrical impulse, known as an action potential, travels along the nerve until it reaches the axon. Once in the axon, it stimulates the vesicles. The vesicles are these little sacs here, inside the axon, which hold the neurotransmitters. Once stimulated by the action potential, these vesicles open in a process known as exocytosis. And this releases the neurotransmitters into the synaptic gap. Once the neurotransmitters have diffused into the synaptic gap, they then start to bind onto the sensitive and specialized receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Neurotransmitters can be either excitatory or inhibitory. Excitatory neurotransmitters, such as these, carry a positive charge and therefore make it more likely that the neuron, the postsynaptic neuron, will fire. Inhibitory neurotransmitters, such as these ones, they carry a negative charge and therefore they make it less likely that the postsynaptic neuron will fire. However, as we can see, both positive and negatively charged neurotransmitters have bound to the receptors of the postsynaptic neuron. So whether or not the postsynaptic neuron actually does fire depends on the process of summation. If there are more positively charged neuro neurotransmitters, so more excitatory transmitters that have bound to the receptor, then the postsynaptic neuron will be charged enough to fire its own action potential, and therefore it will transmit the signal on. If there are more inhibitory neurotransmitters, those with a negative charge, bound to the postsynaptic neuron, then the charge in the postsynaptic neuron will be depleted, and therefore it will not fire, and it will not release its own action potential to pass the message on. Here, more negatively charged neurotransmitters, more inhibitory neurotransmitters, have bound to the postsynaptic neuron, and therefore this will not fire. If, however, more excitatory neurotransmitters had bound to the postsynaptic neuron, in that case, an action potential would be stimulated. And so that electrical charge will then head off down the nerve. And that is how synaptic transmission actually occurs. Remember, it's key to get in that idea of summation because without summation, we don't know whether the neuron is going to fire or not.